Hello and welcome to another Bolt Action Deep Dive. Today I'll be looking at the tank slot in the Generic Reinforced Platoon for Germany. Before I get started, let me address the elephant in the room of the fact that there are numerous vehicles that Germany can take, and many of them are enticing. However, it's very subjective when it comes down to what is the best of the best. So the first thing I'll be discussing is the point cost, which is very important. What hull does it have for an armor value? Weapons and things like that for its point cost. Its role on the battlefield. Because often it is important to pick something that it's going to do and have an effect at. Additionally, the weapon options, the size of the model, as well as the special rules and downsides that it might actually have. Without further ado, coming in at number 10, I have decided the Panzer II Ops L Lux is uh, my preference. Of note, of all the vehicles on this list, this is the only one I have not personally played. However, I have played against it. I do like it as a vehicle. It can be found in Armies of Germany, page 45. Comes in at just that light tank as an A+. 115 points regular. While it's Offensive capability isn't that great with light auto cannon and coaxial MMG. It does have recce, so it can avoid combat at all costs and often trade up in value of whatever is shooting at it. Some alternatives you might consider is the Panzer 1C if you do want to get that punch in there, Flak Panzer 1 if you're going to sit back with that auto cannon, or even the Horch 1A or Opal Blitz with the Flak 38. Slightly smaller vehicle, the Panzer I, is coming in at number 9, which is page 44 of Armies of Germany. This is a 7-plus armored carrier, fully enclosed, but it only comes in at 70 points regular. With its two turret-mounted MMGs, uh, they do have to shoot at the same target, so you're shooting those 12 machine gun dice. So it's really good for mowing down infantry. It's not going to do a lot to other vehicles or anything like that. And actually, I think this is a great vehicle, but it takes up your tank slot, which is often needed for some of that anti-tank or more versatile roles. An alternative to this would be a Renault FT-17, which I think is uh, pretty good as a vehicle at just half the points here, 35 for that uh, single MMG. However, it, it doesn't affect the battlefield enough for that tank slot. However, if you are running like a tank platoon or something, or have those extra slots in a dual platoon, uh, you might consider using one of these two vehicles. The first multi-launcher unit on this list is the Panzerwerfer 42, page 64 of Armies of Germany. This is also a 7-plus armored carrier that is completely enclosed. It comes in at 120 points regular, which you can buy the 15-point Pintle MMG, which isn't a bad idea. However, most people run it as a 96-point inexperienced multi-rocket launcher. And that means uh, it doesn't need that extra veterancy in order to make those shots. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, it is fully enclosed, and that would be why you use this one over maybe the Renault UE or the Stuka Zufus, things like that. However, those are solid options as well. Um, this particular one has the 360 degree and is on a half-track chassis, so y you can maneuver it a lot better, and you don't have to worry about that small arms fire. Coming in at number seven, it's going to be one of the um, longer range kind of artillery options that we have, Armies of Germany, page 59, and multiple other books is the Martyr One or Lorraine Schlepper. There's a few different um, variations on this because it does have multiple different chassis. Uh, this is also a 7 plus armored carrier, 115 points regular, and that gives it a medium AT or medium howitzer. You can choose which one you want depending on your purpose for the battlefield. Oftentimes you'll see this one with the howitzer, and in fact you can upgrade that to heavy howitzer for 40 points. As a drawback, it is open top, so it does need to be that kind of ranged support for your infantry and firing in to the battlefield, not actively pushing it up. One of the downsides that you don't actually see with this model is it is very narrow, which means that its um, side arc is easy to get into, which is another reason you should keep it back. Some alternatives to this is the Krupp Prots with the new Pack 36, or even the Panzer 1 Sig 33 if you're going to go with that heavy howitzer option.
Coming in at number six is the Kugel Blitz. And here I have uh, the Night Sky Miniatures one. This is uh, found on the Wargaming 3D and comes in actually as the most expensive vehicle on this list. However, I will go ahead and put a link to the 3D printer on this one. Page 65 of Enemies of Germany as a 9 plus tank. It is 205 points at regular. The nice thing about this is it does have the two heavy auto cannons, which are on the turret. A hull MMG, and uh, it does have the flak special rule. So if you're up against some of those aircraft that aren't really popular, it's a benefit of some sort. So we can fire all of those guns. And again, we have kind of a multi-purpose. You can get a lot of shots that are, have a lot of penetration at infantry, or you can use those heavy auto cannons into the side of vehicles, be aggressive with that, take out multiple... Uh, soft skin vehicles throughout the game or you can target those at some of those bigger ones and try to outmaneuver them. Some alternatives to this would be any vehicle with a quad auto cannon flak veerling. There's quite a few. Uh, there's a truck you can even or the Opal Blitz you can even upgrade it. Um, there's an SDKFC 7 stroke 2 I think they can have it. Maybe it's the 4. But there are a few options for uh, the, the auto cannon support kind of option. Before I go into the top five, I wanted to do some honorable mentions. One of my favorites is the Hotchkiss H35 and H39 with the Wurf Ramen. This is actually my personal model that I have pictured here. I do like running that. Uh, of note, I realize it is not allowed in the generic reinforcement platoon. However, many tournaments are allowing this because Ostfront doesn't have a whole lot of theater selectors to it. And there, in fact, there are things in that book that can't be taken even in any theater selectors, or reinforced platoons. So it's kind of a silly book that doesn't match any of the uh, formats that we're going into. Also, the Panzer IV G, H, or J. Those are going to be your cheapest vehicles that have Tiger Fear. Um, I actually think the G is much better than people give it credit for. If you're working on like an order dice limit, or if you want maybe some definitive way to protect some advancing infantry, Having that Tiger Fear rule is a good way to do that. And then the other honorable mention is going to be the Explosive Teletank, the new one, Tough Gut. This does say, take a lot of practice. I wouldn't recommend taking it competitively, as it will come up with a lot of situations where you're going to have to have TO intervention, and you and your opponent are going to have to understand exactly how it works before the game starts. Now, moving on is the first of the vehicles. Um, I apologize. I put a fourth honorable mention. The SDKFC 251 stroke 21, the drilling, triple light autocannon. Very similar to the flak drilling vehicles, but um, I, I think it has more potential than people get credit for. Uh, unfortunately, just like some of the, like the Kugel Blitz, th there weren't a lot in production. So it is kind of frowned upon if you're going to run multiples of those and things like that. All right, uh, the first of the vehicles that are considered tank destroyers or assault guns that I have on this list is the Flam Panzer Wagon. And, and I'll talk about why that's important in just a moment. But this is my preferred flamethrower vehicle. In fact, I've run it quite a bit. Armies of Germany version 2, page 60. This is a 7 plus armored carrier. It is open topped, unfortunately, 110 points regular. It does have two vehicle flamethrowers and that forward Pintle MMG, so it does have a lot of that firepower. However, it can only fire one of those flamethrowers. It's open-topped, and it does have the internal volatile fuel tanks. Now, the, the downside of this vehicle is an upside as well. Because it is a flamethrower vehicle, you have to get close with it. But if you get close with it, then you are threatened as an open-topped vehicle to either infantry charges and things like that. Um, or even pins. So it does need support in order to use it, and that's where the Begliet from Ostfront come into play. Even though it is extremely silly, in a competitive environment, this vehicle can have tank riders, which means that it effectively functions as a transport as well. So the combination of it being a flamethrower vehicle with those men that can ride on top of it and inside it is what makes it stronger than most of the other vehicles on the list. Some alternatives you might consider are the Flampanzer 38T, the Hetzer, or the Flamingo 
uh, Flam Panzer II. Um, the Flamingo is considered a tank, so it can't have the tank riders, but the Hetzer is a little bit more expensive. Can still have those. Something to keep in mind. Number four is going to be a, uh, an interesting one that you don't see often. This is the Fargus del Bren. This is found in Ostfront, page 49. It is not an easy army, but it is actually one of my favorite vehicles that I use a lot of and surprise people with it. It is a 7 plus armored carrier, also open topped, 105 points regular. It does have turn on the spot, which can be uh, really fun to use when you, when you need it. Uh, but this mounts a uh, hull mounted light AT gun and a hull mounted LMG. So it does have quite a bit of firepower. It is not considered, or it is considered a German vehicle, so the LMG does get the additional slot. You can always shoot your AT gun as a uh, one inch HE for shooting at infantry. You can split fire and try to get those two pins down. It, it's a good support vehicle. Uh, if you're going to be just sitting at long range or even pushing up the field, which is what I actually prefer to do with it. Despite the fact that it has only forward-facing guns and it is open-topped, pushing up the field with it has the same benefits of that Flam Panzer wagon because you can mount infantry on the back. Uh, in this case, this is my model right here, and I have modeled it so that there are 10 guys in it. Um, there's some people sitting on the back there, and that's to represent the Begliet that can also ride on this vehicle. So as a universal carrier, it can have its transport capacity. It's extremely cheap at what it does. And, and I think it has a lot more punch than people give it credit for. Coming up at number three is the Stug M41 or M42, which is found in Italy's soft underbelly. Again, this vehicle is not yet found in Easy Armory. This is my version that I printed and threw a quick paint job on. It is a 9 plus medium tank. So it is the equal to the highest armored on here it is only 170 points and and that seems like a lot when you're considering like a daca steward or something like that however it has a medium anti-tank gun for with a two inch he it is the cheapest vehicle of any of the armies that has a medium anti-tank gun at 170 points so if you are going to an event where you actually think or making a list where you need an dedicated anti-tank vehicle uh, i highly consider you to use this get get a few cheap activations get up on order dice and then you can react with this and hunt down their vehicles at a nine plus it can ignore a lot and they're likely not gonna want to shoot it with a, a light at gun i mean once you're getting into long range the best they can do is actually a glancing blow they can't actually get any destroyed hits even uh, even if they're matched in the armor, maybe there's a fire roll or something like that. Uh, you can add a pintle mounted MMG. That does make it open top for the rest of the turn. But if you're playing it correctly, uh, you can usually make that worthwhile at 185 points then. The forward-facing gun is a downside. It does also have that vulnerable rule to the sides. So you do have to have that close support. But again, this is considered an assault gun or a tank destroyer. So it can have those tank riders on it. This is probably the most feasible one of the most recent three that can have those tank riders to support it. And I have used this to, to great effect on many occasions with those things. If you want to just sit back and have that anti-tank asset, you might consider the Panzer Jaeger 1. Um, there's also a numerous other HE vehicles, the Panzer 3N. Uh, the 4B, I think, has a light howitzer the Stugs and the Stu 42, things like that. Uh, they all have that 2-inch HE that you can leverage. But this one, the reason I chose this as uh, the top three vehicles is that it has the medium AT gun with the 2-inch HE, which um, is very similar to the Stu 42, but uh, it, it packs a little bit of a, more of a punch within the 170 points. The RSO Pack 40, I've yet to try that one out. But I think it has potential for being a dedicated long-range AT asset. Moving on, the Daka Panzer. Uh, this particular one is from Dewey Cat, uh, this image. Uh, I don't have a good one of these painted up, actually. So I will drop his link in the doobly do. -doo. And uh, the, specifically, it's the early versions, the C, D, E, and F. 
that are found in page 47 of Armies of Germany. However, as of September 2022, the errata did add an additional MMG for increasing the points cost by 5. And that makes it an A-plus light tank with 140 points. Now, this vehicle has a light AT gun, two coaxial MMGs, and one hull mounted MMG, which means if you are shooting at infantry or non-armored assets, you can split those 18 shots into 12 and 6. And that's it, very important when we go on to the next vehicle. Uh, an alternative to that, the Docker Panzer would be the 38T. And while it's okay, I, I think it's pretty feasible you should see lots of Panzer threes around the battlefield. In fact, I think one of the most recent uh, GTs I went to, the only loss I had was to uh, somebody who brought a tank to uh, Dock of Panzers. And without further ado, and I think probably to no one's surprise, I have the Pulitzer M1542. Uh, in this case, it is found on Fortress Budapest, uh, page 109. And this one is from Wargame 3D himself. Um, uh, I don't own this model, but I, plenty of people in my club have this one and use it quite a bit. 145 points regular. It is an 8 plus light tank. It has a light AT gun, two coaxial MMGs, and two hull MMGs. Keep in mind these are Italian machine guns, so they do not get the extra die, but that means you have 20 shots. And the only reason I deem this tank better than the Daka Panzer, it's five points more and you get two shots, which is great. But these shots can be split 10 and 10 into two targets. And and that equal split into two infantry targets is, is very important when you're looking at a vehicle that has some anti-infantry capability in large numbers. I mean, as you saw earlier, the Panzer 1, sure, you're getting 12 shots, and that's great, but you don't quite have that 8-plus armor, which is going to be beneficial, and you don't have the option for the light AT gun. And in fact, I would actually consider that there's probably no alternatives to this. It is by far and large the best vehicle out there when it comes to um, the generic reinforced platoon uh, tank slot, as it's called, even though a lot of these were assault guns or self-propelled artillery, um, anti-aircraft vehicles, and things like that. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's one that I didn't fully mean to do, but I did get a, quite a few requests on this one. Uh, have a wonderful day!